I was drawn to it. I was like, I need to do this. This is what must happen in my life. It's one of those moments where you just, you know that it's right. You know this is what you need. Hello, everyone. How are you? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 634. Today's guest is Sensei Chris Molinier. I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host on the show. I founded Whistlekick because I love martial arts. And I wanted to make sure that we could put together some stuff like this podcast for those of you out there who also love martial arts. If you want to see all the things that we're doing, because it's a long list, you can go to whistlekick.com. One of the things you're going to find there is our store. It's one of the ways that we cover our expenses for this show and the other content that we give away. But if you find something in there you like, use the code podcast15. It's going to save you 15%. And it lets us know that, hey, people who watch the show buy stuff and helps us justify all these expenses to the people who like to count beans. People know that phrase, beans, counting beans, bean counters. Bookkeepers, accountants, those are the folks who count beans. If your interest is going deeper on this episode, or perhaps another episode, because there's a lot of them and they're all available, you can go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. That's where we post the transcripts and the photos and the links. Every single episode gets its own page. And that's where we unpack the episode, give you everything we can to add more context. So you can get more out of the show. Whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Two new episodes each and every week. And why do we do it? Why do we produce this show? Well, we've got the broader umbrella of why we do what we do at Whistlekick, and that's to serve you, the traditional martial artist. But the show is about connecting and educating and entertaining you, traditional martial artists throughout the world. We figure if we check all three of those boxes, you're going to get more value out of your martial arts lifestyle. So that's why we do what we do. Now, if you want to support us, our work, our mission... If you're on the same path that we are trying to bring value to martial artists globally, well, you've got a lot of things you can do to help us out. If you pick one, I'll be a very happy person. I mentioned the store. That's an option. You could also leave a review for this podcast on Apple Podcasts or Google or Spotify or wherever. Wherever you listen from, there's probably something in your app that allows you to leave a review. You could also just share this episode with somebody that you train with. Hey, have you checked out this show? Are you aware of Martial Arts Radio? The number one way that this show grows is from listeners telling people that they care about, that also train, hey, here's a show you really need to check out. And of course, we do have a Patreon, p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash whistlekick. If you like the content that we put out, Patreon's a great place for you to consider throwing a couple bucks a month because we give you exclusive content, stuff you're not going to find anywhere else. Sometimes it's episodes that Andrew and I record as a buffer that we roll out to you instead of putting out on the feed. We give you exclusive access to who's coming up on the show. It's the only place we talk about that. And there's a bunch of other stuff. There are different tiers. You get free merch, depending on where you're at, free stickers or shirts or or things like that. And people don't stop their Patreon contribution. So we're doing something right with it. Check it out. Patreon.com slash whistlekick. Let's talk about today's guest. Let's talk about Sensei. Sensei Chris Molinier comes in with a, a breadth and a depth of background. And that was great. But what I loved most about this episode was how it didn't seem like it mattered where I went. He was willing to go there. You ever had a sparring partner who's like that? It's like, I'm going to do something funky and weird. And instead of just looking at you funny, they go with it. That's kind of what we had, but in a verbal sense. It was wonderful. It was collaborative. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm sure you will too. So here we go. Hello, hello. How are you? Hey, sir. How you doing? I'm doing great. And yourself? Fantastic. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thanks for your willingness to come on and participate. Yes, sir. I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. I was just up in your area. I was, uh, oh, I was really? visiting. Uh, I, I passed up that area. My uh, my father-in-law and mother-in-law live up in uh, Bar Harbor, Maine. So, okay. we, yeah, we, we went up there for the... For, uh, uh, a week. So that was really nice. I really enjoyed nice. that area. Very cool. Nice. Bar Harbor is not far from where I grew up. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. I grew okay. up in Maine. Yeah. Oh, you did you? Oh, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. I'm a New England guy. Where are you? Uh, so I'm currently in uh, North Carolina, Cary, North Carolina, but I'm originally um, uh, from the Philadelphia region. Um, okay. But my mom grew up in Rhode Island 
And so we spent, you know, a bunch of time in Rhode Island. We lived in Connecticut. And then, of course, my, my father-in-law and mother-in-law, they live up in Maine, um, but they're not originally from there. My, they're originally from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, mm. But my, uh, <clears throat> my brother-in-law, he moved uh, because of his work up there. So uh, not a bad place to be, I got to be honest with you. They've, they've been no, there for about really five, not. six years. And it, it was beautiful. We went up to the top of the Cadillac Mountain and you know, nice. we did all the touristy things. Um, but they, they really gave us the inside scoop. They did the whole like, you know, we're going to take this way and this way and the back rows. <laughs> and, you know, they brought us yes. to their their lobster pound that they love to go to those right there. It was it was amazing. It was really, it's, Maine's really, I got to be honest, it's a magical place in my mind. So it, it really is. It, it's really interesting. And, and there are there are different perspectives on Maine, right? You know, like I grew up in our inland. Yeah. And we could certainly, we could, we could relate this back to martial arts for sure. Yeah. You know, there's, there's the Maine that everybody thinks about, which is the coast. Yes. And, and interestingly enough, Maine has more coastline than any other state in the U S I think I've dropped that, that fact. I've got to get something out of my Maine studies from third right. grade, <laughs> more and more coastline than, than anywhere, any other single state in the U S because of all the, all the inlets and everything. Yes, yes, yes. But the majority of Maine, if you look at it on a map, ha- is pretty far inland. And it's right, a exactly. whole different environment, a whole different culture that doesn't revolve around lobster and tourism. And that area of Maine is very much like where I am here in Vermont, very much like northern New Hampshire. Yes. You know, it's a di- it's a different experience. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah, very cool. Well, very. it's nice to talk to you. It's not, I really appreciate yeah, this opportunity. Too. And uh, uh, I was just listening to... Uh, the podcast earlier this morning, the gentleman you had earlier in the week, and actually had one of uh, one of the people I know, uh, Andy Rodriguez, on not too long ago too. Yeah. So that was really cool to to, to hear oh, him nice. too. Yeah, yeah. One of, one of the things that happens as we keep trucking along is that people are connected to other people. They'll refer us good guests for the show, right? And it kind of builds this fun kind of spider web of yeah, martial I, arts around the world. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Have, have that community and that network mm. and just, you know, you're like, wait a second, that guy, oh, I know him and he knows, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So it's really, that's, that is definitely a, a cool thing about martial arts in my opinion is that, that worldwide web of friends and, and people that you just meet over the course of your, uh, mm. over the course of the years, you know, and you end up somehow coming, circling back around and, and meeting up in some way, shape or form. So mm. very cool. Yeah. So let's let's jump in. Yes, we're yes. going. Yes. We're going. And you know, you you talked about all these different places that you've been. Yes. And so I could guess. I don't think I'm going to guess though. I think I'm just going to ask, you know, where were you and how did you get started? Like let's let's go there first and see yeah. where that that takes us. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, um for me it, it's one of those processes where you know, I I'm, you know, grew up in the you know in the in the late seventies and the and the eighties, and I mean I just you know it was all around me at all the time you know it was kung fu theater on Saturdays I mean I literally remember get, you know watching that as a kid uh, on the weekends um, you know all the Bruce Lee movies of course you know the Karate Kid growing up and watching that so I, I was just. You know, and being being a rambunctious young man, young boy, um, you know, imitating everything in, that, that I see, right? So I I asked my parents, I begged them uh, to do martial arts classes, and I and I remember that right, very close to where my my family lived, there was a martial arts studio. It was, it was a karate school, and I don't know the gentleman that was there. I just remember seeing the school and I was like, can I please go? Can I please go? And the answer was always, you know, no, it, you know, my parents didn't quite understand the whole concept of martial arts. My, uh, my family in particular thought it was just, it was about violence, right? Um, fast forward, we fast forward a little bit and I'm 15 years old and, um, I was, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. I was, I was really struggling. You know, we, we all, I think when we, we get to a certain age, we, we struggle, um, especially in those teen years where it's very, you know, it's that finding yourself moment. And uh, I remember distinctly, I was doing, it was kind of, you know, and this is kind of a, it's not a cliche, it's a cliche in some ways, but it's, it's the truth. I was kind of hanging out with the wrong people. Uh, I was kind of getting myself steered in a direction that was not going to be very good. Uh, and my mom 
you know, for, I, I don't know exactly what happened, but she's, she found a information, a flyer somewhere uh, about a, uh, a karate class. And uh, I went there for the first class. So this is uh, 92, 90, yeah, 91, 92, somewhere there. I was uh, 15 years old. Cause I remember she had to drive me there. Couldn't drive myself. <laughs> and uh, I, you know, I took that first class and uh, come to find out, it was uh, Matsubayashi Shorinru. Uh, my instructor was uh, Ed Cook, and uh, I instantly fell in love. I mean, like literally the first class. I, I I thought to myself, I was like, I found my way. I found what I want to do with myself. After that very first class, it was it was it was like magic to me. Um, and then I just I threw myself into it. I, and and consequently, what happened was because. I went and trained and, and it, I made it every, every class that I could take from, from, uh, uh, from Sensei uh, Cook was like, I was there and, um, it, it just became something where I learned so much. I grew so much mentally, you know, um, obviously physically, of course, the physical aspect of martial arts is huge, but mentally I matured and I really learned how to focus. And I, I pulled myself basically from basically about to fail out of high school to getting straight A's. And, you know, for me, that was, that was phenomenal. I mean, that, I mean, like my mom just, just pulled up the report card and sent me a picture of it because she was going through all of the old stuff downstairs in the basement. She said, I still have it. Right. And uh, it, it just really was a, it was a source of pride for myself uh, to be able to do that. And it really, it, I mean, it, literally transformed my life. I mean, from that moment, from that first class, knowing what I wanted to do with myself, it creates such a, such a, a wayfinder, such a way to kind of point you in, in a direction and, and kind of set the tone for the rest of your life. So um, there's more to the story than that. But that's, that's the, that is the first moment where I can really go back and be like, wow, that, that's, that's kind of what set everything in motion for me. It's pretty powerful. This, this idea that you step in something you've wanted to do for so long, something that you know, your, your parents wouldn't allow you to do, and yet it became so transformational. Right. Were you someone that was always deeply into a thing? If you did something, you did it, you know, both feet jumped in. Um, you know, I, I think that I played sports. So I was a, I was a, uh, a soccer player. So I played soccer. Um, and I, I did activities, but you know, they were never anything. I, I was always physical. You know, I liked doing physical activities, riding my bike. I liked doing that type of thing. Um, but never to the extent that martial arts touched me. Like when, when I found that, that was a whole nother level for me. Like I had never been that engrossed into something, um, the way that martial arts took me because, uh, I mean, it just, like I said, I mean, after that first class, I was like, this is the way, <laughs> this is the, <laughs> this is the path. This is the way, this is the way I must go. Um, cause I could instantly feel that it was right. It was that perfect fit for me. If you can, I want you to go a little bit deeper on that feeling in that first class. And, and here's why, when we think about people who join martial arts quite often, they fit into one of two age demographics. You got the, the biggest age demo, which is, you know, under 10 years old and they go in and it's a thing because maybe they have some interest or they saw something on TV or in a movie, but the parents are deeply involved in the decision process because it's a child. Or you have people who start later in life and usually those folks are someone who always kind of wanted to do it. They were always interested Timing never worked, whatever it is. And they find it and go, wow, this is great. But you're talking about starting at, if we, I bet if we were to somehow plot the age that people start in martial arts, 15 has got to be one of the least common ages because of what's going on at school and the, and the perception that unfortunately martial arts still has in society and it being an individual sport, you know, you tend to become an outcast. Yeah, it, you're. Yeah, I, I want to tack one more piece on. Yes, sir. Before before I turn you loose. Yes, sir. You're you're talking about what what sounds like a slow deviation from the style of path that your parents would have wanted you to be on. The one that you know it sounds like in hindsight you didn't want to go down. So there's that other piece in there too. You know, you get in there on day one. You're like, this is great. This is my way. This is my path. 
How much awareness did you have around how this might change you, how it may take your grades from not so great to the opposite end of the spectrum? Um, yeah, it, it's you, you bring up a lot of really, really deep thought, uh, deep questions and, and, and really some great points. And, you know, I, I think maybe I would like to kind of, you know, kind of tackle each piece and kind of talk about that because yeah you're right about the about the demographics i mean yeah you're absolutely right you have that um kids that are you know 10 and below and and like you said that the parents are a huge factor in that um and you know the interest is there um and i'll go back to that age group because that's a a big part of my my story too but we'll, we'll get to that point too as well too um but you know, for me, yeah, for starting at 15, it, it was, yeah, you're, you're right. It absolutely. It's, it's, it, if you had to put it on a, on a graph, you would probably, one of the least likely ages to start martial arts would probably be in that, in that, that preteen to teenage years because of, yeah, just that, that awkwardness and just also, you know, the trying to, you know, look cool to your friends and, you know, all the, the all the pressures, all the society pressures that go on at that age. Um, so yeah, for me, it was definitely one of those things where it became, um, you know, it was an odd time, but in the same, on the flip side, it was the perfect time. It was what I needed at that moment. And and I really just feel, uh, super blessed and, and, and deep, deep sense of gratitude for being able to have that opportunity because it really has just, it was the moment that I needed and and it found me, um, or I found it or however you want to say it. Mm -hmm. Um, and how did it affect me and, or did I understand the level of what was going on at that moment? No, it's, it's not one of those things, you know, as we're, as we're in that, that age group and we're all kind of guilty of this. We're very self-absorbed in what we're doing and what we need and, you know, what's happening to us. And I wasn't thinking necessarily about the future in some respects, but I, I, the feeling that I still carry to me to this day was this sense of like, wonderment like this sense of it's almost like it was like magic like i would watch uh sense day even on that first class i remember he, he we started doing you know basics our kihon and uh everything every all the little steps i remember how to form a fist how to throw a punch how to block doing some arm conditioning exercises some uh quick take tai no wando, which later on became a very big part of training which i'm very grateful for too um and we did kata, and that's when we did the when we did when we got to the section where we started doing kata. That I was mesmerized because I watched him perform it, and then I had to memorize and and or had to you know imitate what he had just shown me. And that to me really struck a, a deep chord to me. It really, you know, because I because we've been I had been influenced up to that point watching you know the the movies, watching Bruce Lee, watching the Karate Kid, watching all of these different things, and to be able to actually physically learn this and start to do it, it was like that kind of magic moment for me. Um, and did I know that it was going to take me to where I went? No, but the 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 sense that I knew is that it was like I, I was drawn to it. I was like, I need to do this. I, this is this is what must happen in my life, and I, and I just. I, it's one of those moments where you just, you know, that's right. You know, this is what you need. This is where you need to go. And, you know, as I go back through the years, you know, as I grow older and I think back to those time periods, I, I try and share that, 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 that essence, that passion, that, that moment with my students and, and with those around me too, because uh, it really becomes something that, you know, you can help be that person for somebody else. The way my sensei was for me, uh, the way that moment affected me. And so, uh, I think that's kind of my, my take on it. I'm sure as I grow older and I think more about it and I, and I go back to those moments of when I first started the training in that kind of time period, I'll gain more of an appreciation for it. But that's kind of where I'm at at the moment with it. Hmm. You talked about kata and, you know, we're style agnostic on the show. I, I don't think there are too many people who are going to step into the show and not know kata, but forms, pumse, toll. We'll throw some some other stylistic terms around. I assume that when you first saw and started learning kata, you were it wasn't that long after you started training. You were probably still fifteen. Am I am I right? Yes, sir. Okay. So 
and 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 you don't have to do the sir thing. If if anybody's oh, getting the I'm sir, sorry. it's you. You're the you're <laughs> the 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 one that we're here to to revere and respect. You're the one that's sharing your story. Yeah, well, it, it's it's so ingrained it, in me. I, it's I, habit. I know. I get it. I get it. I literally, um, I bow, I like. I can't shake someone's hand and not bow. Like, you can't, like it. everywhere. Do, like, do you do you do the hand the hand I, thing too? I and I don't do the hand thing underneath. No, okay. but I, I do the bow as I shake one's hand. Like I sit there and I laugh at myself. I'm like, what am I doing? And I like I, it's just it's all automatic so yes i totally understand <laughs> this is a fun detour have you ever in a business meeting said hi or us uh, yeah i've said hi or under my breath i'm like what am i doing uh, oh under your breath oh yeah, you are lucky. Like, i've like, done I'll it i'll catch myself saying um hi and just like yeah we're, we're us martial artists we appreciate that because i, I i've uh, there's other people i've seen do the same thing and i i chuckle at myself because they're doing it i'm like yep that's what i do too <laughs> oh. 15 20 people in a room Hey, Jeremy. Hi. Yeah. And everybody yes. looks at me like, sorry, wrong yeah, environment. Yeah. yeah, you can't help it. Yeah. I'm not insane. If, right. If exactly. We, if we were in a martial arts school right now, like that, that would be great. Like you'd all, you'd all think I was, you know, really dialed in. Exactly. So not only at 15, are you starting at an uncommon time? It sounds like just the way you talked about training, you're embracing the aspect of training that most 15 year olds are going to be most resistant to. Yes, exactly. You're a weird kid. I, yes, I definitely was. <laughs> and, and, and I say that as someone who also at 15 absolutely loved Kata. And um, it, it was, it was the thing that, that made me feel alive. Yes. What was it about learning forms and, and that initial demonstration? I, I would imagine that, you know, you saw your instructor doing it going, wow, this is really impressive. It, it, it gave you something to aspire to. Talk about that mindset, that approach, and how it started to steer, I'm guessing, your training and and uh, your path. Yeah, I mean, it just, you know, uh, to me, kata is one of those things that it's just, it, 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 it reaches back um, very deep into the art and, and, you know, and I've trained multiple disciplines and, and some, some disciplines that don't have kata, they, they, for, you know, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, for instance, um, where it's focused more on the, the partner aspect and the drilling, the techniques and the, you know, the, the, the sparring or the rolling element, um, where is in, you know, my base art being, uh, you know, Shoranru Karate. Yeah. The kata, it, it was to me just something that was just, it it just really spoke to me. It just this concept of uh, learning a sequence of movements and then trying to perfect it and and really going back to it each time. You know, repetition after repetition and trying to find that. You know, find where can I where can I tweak this a little bit? How can I make this a little bit better? How can I get closer to making it more like sensei? And that element to me really spoke to me it, it really it, it you know it, it drives you it, it to me it, it for my type of personality it drives me for okay this is the this is what i'm trying to do this is the the the, the, the pattern or structure and i'm trying to replicate what sensei is doing uh in the initial phases you know because you're you're a beginner you're learning uh, kata and you're trying to perform it and and seek approval <laughs> okay that was a good one uh that one maybe not so much <laughs> but that's that's the fun that's the that's the fun of it in my opinion that's the 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 the, de the depth of it and then later as you you know as you start to grow as a martial artist as you, you know, gain more experience um you know the kata takes even on more meanings and more more complexity and more uh, in-depth elements and doc, you know the longer that I train I, we're, we're coming up here on uh, next year will be my 30th year training um, you know it's gonna still be a day that doesn't go by that I'm like wow I, I, I learned something new or um, there's something I, you know whether it's someone shows me or rather I'm researching it or whether I'm internalizing it myself, or I watch, you know, my students do it, or they ask me questions, it becomes this just never ending cycle of, you know, seeking to, to, to perfect this, this, this template and take it so much further than that, you know, and, and really start to get into the body mechanics, the, the applications, the, the why, and 
in the beginning, when I was 15, it was just do this <laughs> because this is the way, this is what you must do. Um, and just trying to trying to get that basic idea of making the making the movements correct was a struggle in itself. And that was fun. Uh, but now as as we go on, you know, we end up, you know, going back to kind of more and more and it becomes just this you know, invaluable, in my opinion, training tool uh, to help us mind and body. Yeah. Did I lose you? No, I'm still here. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Ah, you've got me thinking. I don't like that. When you think about kata in the modern perspective, on martial arts. You know, we, we, we've talked about this on the show and, and I like getting different perspectives on this. I know my feelings on it. Longtime listeners are quite aware of my feelings on this. Forms in general are a contentious aspect of training now. It's, it's hard to know the breakdown of how many people find them to be a waste of time, but it's a vocal group of people, if nothing else. And it feels like a lot of what we do as martial artists now, we're, we're talking a lot more about how the old ways relate to the newer world. And there are a lot of people who look at forums and say, you know what, these, these don't fit. What do you think? Um... You know, I it, 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 I know exactly what you're saying about you know in this day and age and and how there is definitely a, a, a vocal group that says that that kata is is pointless and um, I, I you know I, and I, I always try and take perspective of, uh, and take the, the the wide view the wide picture of things because. You know, martial arts is so many things to so many different people. There's so many aspects of it. Um, and, uh, you know, my big thing about uh, about that is I understand why they may say that or they, I understand why they may have that perception of it. Um, and, you know, they I totally believe that everyone should have that. You know, if that's your opinion, then great. I, I think that you should, if that's what you think, absolutely. But what I think is especially i'm going to relate this to something i'm doing right now i'm i'm very been last couple of years i've been very heavily deeply involved in um kenjutsu and ei jitsu i've really made it uh, a, a part of my training and we're talking about katas that are hundreds of years older i'm studying uh shinkageru which is one of the uh original sword styles of you know the the uh uh the Edo period um, with the Yagyu family, and I'm, I'm doing these katas with my sensei. I, you know, I traveled to Tokyo to train with him, and and he's teaching me these aspects of these katas, and, and a lot of it is oral transmission. You have to, you know, there's only so much you can gain from doing the kata because there's not a lot of written about it. But the oral transmission, what he's saying to me about the movements and the principles behind this, behind these movements, the the principles apply no different than uh, it would apply to a, a, a modern a modern martial artist, let's say an MMA fighter, which is using angles, using feints, using deception, using um, uh, the person's aggressiveness against them. You know, so these principles, no matter whether you're doing a, a, a more modern approach to martial arts, where you're talking about like uh, the combat sports, or you're doing something as old as you know uh, Yagyushin Kagiru Kenjutsu. The principles remain the same. So my answer is, is that the kata, in my opinion, are still very relevant. There's, in fact, there's a lot that can be learned from these ancient forms that we can apply in the modern world and also understand how it relates to what's happening in the modern world as far as martial arts and self-defense and all of the other elements. So again, that's my opinion. Uh, I don't know if I'm right or wrong. Um, but that's my feeling towards kata and how it still holds relevancy in today's day and age. Um, I also, on the same token, believe that, you know, you do need to have modern training methods at your disposal and, and definitely use them. Um, because, you know, yes, there are definitely elements that have 
been pushed to the forefront in today's uh, today's age of uh, the internet, uh, YouTube, uh, all of the connectiveness that we have that wasn't even there 20 years ago. I mean, when we when I started martial arts, there was none of that. Maybe there was books, <laughs> and you had to do a seminar, and if you wanted to learn, you had to travel, <laughs> or you had to learn from sensei, or you would travel with sensei to go to another dojo to train with a friend of his, and that would be how you brought in your horizons or expanded your knowledge, or, or tournaments would be another avenue. Um, but in today's day and age, we have so many more avenues. But do I think kata still holds a place? Um, absolutely. And mm-hmm. again, like I said, I, for those points, and there's more points, but those that would be the main one that I would like to make. We're on the same page. I used to say that there, there's the way I used to kind of defend the idea of forms and the newer way that I'm thinking about it. And I'll, I'll share with you and, and the audience both. I'd, I'd love your feedback. What I used to say was, you know, I grew up in karate and, and what was presented to us was this progression of kihon, kata, kumite. And for those who aren't used to Japanese terminology, basics, forms, sparring. But I reversed kata and kumite for a single reason. I've known plenty of people who are phenomenal fighters that aren't great martial artists. They're fighters. But I've never met someone who was exceptional at forms that wasn't also at least a competent martial artist in the other areas. But lately, I've been thinking of it differently. Not not in a, a changed way, but in a different way of presenting it. Well, what are all the things that you need if you're going to be effective at defending yourself? Well, you should be stronger. You should be faster. You should have uh, muscle memory and flexibility and balance and some sequences that you can deploy at a moment's notice without having to think about them. You should have focus. Well, what if you could work on all of those things at once? Yes, yes. Holy cow, that's a form. Yep. <laughs> if you're just walking through it, no, it's a waste of time. Right. Regardless of what your, your values are, w- walking through anything, not putting intent behind something. You know, you and I could conduct this conversation right now and we could phone it in. We could literally and figuratively phone it in. Yeah. It's a waste of both of our time. It'd be a waste of the time of the people listening. They wouldn't keep going. So we've got some intent, some substance behind it. Everything we do has some substance. Nobody sits down to dinner with a a bowl of ice. Right. And to me, that's, if, if you're putting something into your forms, there's something coming back. Exactly. So what do you think? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yes, absolutely. 100% agree. It's what you put in is what you get out. And that's, and that's, that's, that's just a, a principle of life, right? And we're mm. looking at those principles and like what we put into it is what we get out of it. And yeah, what you put into your to your training, to your martial arts training is, is what you'll get out of it. And I 100% agree. If you, if you go into that, and if you practice that kata with the intent, with the, um, not just the physical intent, but also the mental intent. And I recently had someone just say this to me and it really struck a chord with me is, You can really tell when someone has, when someone's mastering a form or when they, when they, when they are connected to the form because they are, and we've heard this one before, but just it was the way they put it is you can, you can see the opponent, you as the Mm. bystander, you as the person viewing from the third person perspective, you see the opponent in front of this this person as they perform the kata. And that, that to me is really, that was really kind of struck me because it's not you in the middle of the form going through the motions and seeing the enemy in your eyes, but being able to project that level of intensity, focus, concentration, intent behind your movement that a third person can be on the outside looking in and see that same element. And that, that really, I was like, Oh, that's a really, that's a really cool way to, to hear that. Um, Cause we hear it so many times, you know, have that intent, you know, but it should be as if you were, you know, fighting against someone or there is the enemy within, you know, in front of you. 
but to hear that perspective and then to go back to you know the 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 element of of kata and and how does it uh perform and or how does it help us uh, perform yeah you said it all the all the all the things which is you're creating muscle memory which brings me back to uh you know there there are times when there had been moments when a move from a kata you know helped me for real <laughs> and it wasn't i it wasn't me saying okay arm move <laughs> it was just natural reaction but the natural reaction becomes so ingrained in you because you perform that move hundreds if not thousands upon thousands of repetitions in time and it's not doesn't become something where i have to think it's just your body does um and there's another benefit of kata and in in a way you know we you you have modern martial arts um that they're doing katas too shadow uh you know shadow boxing boxers uh muay thai uh kickboxers there's there's shadow boxing shadow boxing is a is a is a kata in a way you have um other combat sport athletes that will be drilling let's say for instance on a grappling dummy that's that's no different it becomes like an apparatus it's no different than the wing chun stylist training on the uh the muk chung the uh the wooden dummy just from a different position with a different goal in mind but it it still becomes a a a training tool uh for for all martial artists um and you know i think that relevancy i think that element of kata will always be part of martial arts in some way shape or form um some more than others depending on the style or discipline um but i believe it's a very very valuable training tool that uh that also carries with you as you grow older because as you grow older <laughs> you know <laughs> sparring and and fighting become less and less and having something like a tool of a kata still helps you maintain the connection to the art and still be able to train without you know the uh, without the 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 pressures that it puts on your body because you know we i can say from my perspective at this moment that yes uh, martial arts can be hard on the body and over time you have to adjust the way you practice and kata to me becomes one of those training tools that still excites you still gets you motivated mm. and it's also a way that can help you with your health and longevity again in my opinion yeah well hey, it's all it's this is your episode so it's all your opinion and, and yeah. you know we don't we don't we don't catch a lot of flack on this show people people who want to stir the pot in a non-constructive way they're all they they tend to hang out in different circles, which yeah. is which is kind of a nice thing. Yes. <laughs> let's let's shift gears. You you said something, and, and I'm I'm not going to get all the words right, but you hinted at something when we were talking about ages earlier that the under ten demographic that 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 was that was something we'd poke at later. Yep. Do you remember what you meant? I, I do, I do, and, okay. and we're talking about that. You know, we're saying on a graph. If we could put that, you know, age there. Yeah. Um, the reason I, I made that comment is because um, another really powerful moment in my martial arts training career was when I earned my green belt. And uh, I think quite a few martial artists, when we get to a certain intermediate level, um, it, this may happen to us, or we are asked to do this. Which is, I remember specifically. Um, because I was 15, I, I was 16 at the time, maybe even almost 17. I'm not sure where I was, but somewhere in that. I was definitely driving myself at that point, at that time. So definitely 16 or above. And I had earned my green belt. And I remember distinctly, Sensei asked me to help him with the juniors class. And the juniors was that 10 and under age group. And it really, it really did something to me, which is, it gave me a, a responsibility. It gave me a, um, it gave me a, a, an avenue that I hadn't up to that point in my life be able to kind of, you know, kind of take, take that mentor role, take that, that role of being able to, now I'm not just responsible for myself because again, like I said earlier, at that 15 age range, it was 16, 17, it was all about me. But given the responsibility and being asked to, to, to help him teach that young age group, it, it also molded me. It really helped uh, forge me in a way because it really, take, it, took, it really took me out of my comfort zone, but also out of this, this 
this place of always what do, what do I have to do or what's what's next for me I had to think about someone else and that's a powerful that was a powerful moment for me and it carried forward you know into my into my martial arts life you know because of uh the you know the the age the the age group that I teach quite often and have people from all walks of life, um, all ages. Um, but a majority of the students that I have are, are in that younger age range. And, um, it really, it really helped me, um, to have that responsibility or really helped me to, to understand that, um, you know, being in that mentor position is very powerful. And at the same time, very powerful. It's also something that you have to be um, very aware of because, you know, you are there to help these young minds, these young uh, guys and, and girls um, learn how to grow because kids at that age group, they're, they're just learning. A lot of them are learning how to be confident, how to, how to use their voice, how to also control themselves too. So it, it became a really, really, you know, powerful message and powerful moment for me. And that's kind of why I, I, I mentioned that, that age group when we were kind of talking about that, mm. we plotted it on the graph. Like, yes, it, it is definitely a big majority of, of certain uh, martial art disciplines where you have, especially in, in my, in, in karate, you have quite a few um, that are in that age group. And a lot of it's also because their parents actually did karate when they were younger too. So they're kind of, paying it forward or, or passing it forward. So it's a kind of a cool thing for me. Yeah, I, I, I completely get it. It's, it's so, there's something in, in being able to work with that youthful energy. It's so powerful. It's so transitional. And I can't speak for you, but I feed on it. I love working with kids for that reason. Not constantly, you know, they wear me out. You know, just yes. to be present <laughs> yes, with them. Sure. I mean, there's nothing more exhausting than stepping into a stranger's martial arts school and, and running an hour long kids class for me. I'm just right. like, all right, I'm gonna go sit down and, and take a nap through the adult class. Yes. <laughs> for but sure. It's just it's so much, it's so much fun. Now we've yes. skipped over a, a big part of your journey. We went from you started at 15, we just talked about green belt, and now we're talking about you teaching. How how did you get there? Well, it's, it's a long journey because I, you know, I, I, I really always, it, my, my mindset was, I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready. I need to train more. I'm not ready. <laughs> um, I, I, I really, I, I knew there would be a, a moment when I wanted to open a, a dojo, but I kept always telling myself, now's not the time. Keep training keep, you know, keep, keep plugging away. Um, and I did, I did a big, big jump. Um, I became a, uh, live-in student at a dojo. So when I turned 18, um, I left, uh, I left my, my family's house and I did, I got permission for, uh, from the sensei to move into his dojo and become, uh, an uchideshi or live-in, uh, live-in student. Um, and that was a huge moment for me because again, the transformation um, that I took from 15 up to 18 was huge. Uh, luckily, I was able to graduate high school. That was the other thing that was a stipulation is <laughs> you can't move in any dojo unless you graduate high school. So that was another big motivation for me. Um, I was like, I got to get out of here. <laughs> it's just every 18-year-old has that, has that, that mindset with that when they reach that age. But I moved into uh, uh, one of my sensei's uh, dojo. And I spent three years there training, uh, training with him. And that was, that was, that was huge. That was, that was a big, 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 big part of my journey. Um, but even after, even after living at the dojo for three years and, and then kind of taking a break, I took a little bit of a break there. It was, it was very, very mentally and physically strenuous, uh, took a little bit of break and, um, went out and kind of worked out in the real world for a while just to get some of that life experience. Um, then I went back and I moved into another dojo to again, uh, do this apprenticeship, which is actually training. And again, another very powerful, uh, that one was almost three years as well too. So I spent almost a total of six years living in, in dojos and, and just immersing myself in, in training 24 seven. Um, but 
once I once I left that dojo, I started to um, I started to kind of uh, look for because uh, I had at that moment I had never really made money off of martial arts. I always worked on jobs, or I got paid to be a student because I lived at the school and I would help out cleaning the dojo or signing up members or helping out with the beginner students. So kind of like everything was paid for for me. Um, but then I, I, I decided that, you know, I was going to take some odd jobs here and there. I, it was, I was a server in a restaurant. I was a bartender. I uh, did all sorts of, you know, uh, customer service jobs, all sorts of different things. But what kind of changed my trajectory to get to my own dojo was I worked for a, uh, a, more, a more commercial school. And this is in the Philadelphia region. And that kind of working for a commercial school was something new to me because everything up to that point had been at traditional dojos, um, which is very different than a commercial school. And through that, through working at this commercial school, I ended up actually meeting my wife. So she's a martial artist as well. And uh, for, for, for better or worse, <laughs> we play well together sometimes. Um, but that, that really kind of that that was like all right now's the time I, now i feel the that this is the moment because when i met her um we pretty much got married within a, a year of meeting each other and we started our family and that was like okay this is the moment and so now we're fast forward and that was in my uh late 20s uh maybe just you know just about to turn 30 so that's when i actually opened up my first school was was around that age Hmm. was it what you expected <laughs> no because you had more context for what it was going to be than a lot right. of people who open a school right yeah yeah having worked at yeah. worked at a commercial school having spent, theoretically you knew what you were getting yourself into yes i did know what i was getting myself into but it is <clears throat> excuse me it is very different um teaching training under someone else that that has their own school because now being in the 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 position of you are the leader or the sensei of that dojo it it changes everything so yes i was putting that off for many 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 years uh and training as much as i could and also learning and seeing seeing different perspectives in different uh, different ways but yes it, it definitely definitely was not exactly what i expected because there are definitely things that come up that as you know as an assistant instructor or as just a you know as a living um student um you don't have to be responsible for those things you get to see someone else handle it but it's two different things watching someone else do it and then everything resting on you and the decisions and the things that you decide and that you do. So it was definitely a, it was definitely an eye opener for me for sure, but I wouldn't ever take it back because it really, it's, it's what I had wanted from the first day. It was, it was making the dream come true as they say. And, you know, and I wouldn't change anything uh, because it really, it, it really is, you know, having a dream come true is being able to do that. And of course, you know, to make it even better, my, my wife is involved in, in having met her through martial arts and us doing this together. It, it, it makes it special for, for me and for us. I get the sense you'll, you'll be okay with me, me going there. I, I want to ask because it can be a sensitive subject. Yeah. You met your wife in the dojo. Yes. And there, there's a lot of, uh, there are some, there's some minds in there to step over. Uh, I've seen plenty of people trip on them. Yes, yes. Would you absolutely. mind talking about that part of your journey? Yeah, no, I, 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 I would totally, would totally love to talk about that. And you're absolutely right. Yes, there, there is definitely there are. Yes, I've, I've seen that happen to other people too in the dojo where. Um, you know, uh, you meet people in the dojo and, and a relationship blossoms and, um, it can turn out really well. And, and this situation for me where, you know, I end up, you know, marrying, uh, meeting my wife and, and us starting our family and, and us getting married. And, and, and there's on the flip side to that, just like everything in life, 
you also see the the, the carnage that can be created and and um you can see you know it, it, i mean i i've i haven't been part of it but i've seen and and witness you know just that that element of it that can be so so destructive um and it definitely is one of those subjects where it's it's yeah it's it's tough to see that happen to people too because dojo is like a family it really is it's a it's a I, I i always treat it as a family atmosphere and so i really you know it's it's tough to see people go through those type of things and have that but it, it goes back in my opinion it goes back to you know being a good a good leader being a good mentor being a good a good uh, a good sensei and and you know things happen organically and and there's things out of outside of your control but um there's definitely you know it, there's definitely things that need to be considered in that in that element in that perspective for sure yeah i i want to i want to apologize the um the guy who mows the lawn forgot that tuesday is the never never mow the lawn day the one day that i asked about to be here uh, yeah he's a good friend he does a great job so i'll remind him after the show but uh listeners if, if uh we'll, we'll do our best julius does a great job we'll do our best to pull that drone out yes uh, the theme of your story if we were to take a step back and, and kind of connect these dots every episode that we do has a little bit of a theme to it and the one here are from my mind are are these signposts on your journey you know they they all connect we're out of sequence on them right rarely do we ever go in complete chronological order it happens but it's not common yeah but here we are we're, we've got these chunks these pieces and in every one it's so relatable so completely relatable and so let's let's keep going down the path you know, let's look at the tomorrow and the next month and the next year and the next whenever. You talked a little bit about age and, you know, anybody who's been been doing a little bit of math on the episode gets it, you know, can, can know, knows how old you are. Yes. You've got plenty of time left. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's no sense in my mind that you're you're slowing down, you're stopping or you're poised for any kind of dramatic change with respect to martial arts. In the future so what i what i'd like to do i've asked this in different ways i'm going to ask it in a different way than i ever have before mm -hmm. let's play it out as a time machine okay somehow there's a time machine you get in it you come back sit down and talk to you Yes. And you get a few minutes to talk to yourself from the future. Wormholes don't open. The universe doesn't explode. We don't have to worry about any of these sci-fi consequences. This is a thought exercise. But you only get to talk about martial arts. You don't get to talk about your family. You don't get to talk about the world. You don't get to get stock tips. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you, don't, you don't get to pull a biff and find out who's winning the Super Bowl. You know, over the next however many years, there's a, a movie reference for some of you to get. What questions are you asking yourself from the now? And what answers are you hoping that you give from the then? Wow, that's a that's a deep question. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> I try. Be, I try. Good one, Jeremy. Wow, you got me on that one. That was a good one. Wow. I, I you know, I mean if yeah, I love the sci-fi theme here too. Just you know, huge, huge, uh, huge sci-fi nerd here. So I know exactly the nice, movies you're talking nice. I'm about. I'm not alone. <laughs> you're not alone. No, I think uh, that's a, a love sci-fi. So, um, by the way, that new Chris Pratt movie that came out tomorrow, Tomorrow War. Yeah, yeah. Don't just don't. <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the heads up. Uh, and, but you know, I can't stay away from any 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 sci-fi movies. In fact, sometimes the worse they are, the better. <laughs> Uh, I'll watch it anyway. Um, you know, I, it's it's that would be a tough question. I, I guess the 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 questions would be to myself from the future about martial arts. I would be. Hey, everybody! I managed to get Chris back. We had some some internet stuff, but he's back. And it'll sound a little bit different, but that's okay. It's not bad. And 
we're going to do our best to edit this stuff together. So hopefully you get to this point and say, Jeremy, I had no idea what's going on. And I've actually ruined it by being so abrupt. But what I'm going to ask you to do now, Chris, if you wouldn't mind, uh, is to continue or really to restart. You know, I, I had laid things out with this theoretical sci-fi scenario. So take it from the top. What would you now ask future you about martial arts? Uh, so I had was saying that I would first ask myself, you know, what, what kept you still going? What, where, where was the, where was the, 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 the drive? What, what was, what was the things that helped you keep the, the flame burning? Um, and I was saying that, you know, the flame and, and passion in my martial arts is so intense, um, with me and it's just ingrained in me. Um, but it's always, it's always interesting because as the years go on, what drives us and what, and what our, where our passion is, uh, I, I find that it, it changes. Um, and I would want to kind of know where, where that road goes, where that journey goes, what are the things that keep, keep driving me? So that would be a kind of getting that insider tip about, okay, this, these are the things that are going to happen. And these are the things that you're going to, you're going to gravitate towards. And these are the things that, um, you know, you kind of keep, uh, keep you, uh, with that, that mindset about what's happening in martial arts and, and what keeps you, uh, you know, waking up day after day with that same passion. And mm. that would be question number one, um, because is it teaching? Is it more training? Is it travel? Um, that, those would be the things I would ask, you know, because going to see seminars, you know, like travel to different places and, and meet new people and do different things that kind of like helps uh, keep the flame alive, in my opinion, or, or for me. Um, the next question I would definitely ask is like, where does martial arts go in the future? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Not to sound all movie-like, but where, where, is, where does the direction go? How does martial arts keep evolving? Because it really just in the time period that I've been involved, I, I've seen uh, a revolution and an evolution of the martial arts. And I would ask my future self, I was like, where does it go? What, what keeps happening? What is the, what is the future of martial arts become? Um, and that would be another, another question I'd ask because I, I really, I've enjoyed watching the way martial arts has evolved in a lot of ways. And as I am a traditional, uh, martial artist in many respects, I also love the, the, the elements that have, you know, come up over the, over the last 25 years, uh, particularly, you know, mixed martial arts in particular and seeing its evolution and watching the way it's progressed and also the, uh, the practical, um, you know, practical self-defense element of practical, you know, karate, the practical, uh, self-defense oriented, um, martial arts uh like Krav Maga and different elements of that seeing that particular part of it play out and just seeing where it goes in the future that'd be another question I would love to ask my future stuff where does it evolve like <laughs> are we using laser swords please tell me that we are we get to the point that we have uh lightsabers <laughs> <laughs> nice so that nice. would be another question love to ask my future self but like please please you know for being being a kid i was like either i want to be a jedi <laughs> or i have a you know i want to be uh jedi would be definitely be number one uh, so please tell me that you know we, we learn to use the force and, and lightsabers become a real thing so that's how I'm those answer. are solid those questions, questions for I'd sure my future self yeah have you just yeah. as an aside have you ever played with a lightsaber and and used it as a sword You know, I would, I would never, never admit to it, but you know, I'm going to have to. Who has it? Yes, if you I have. haven't, <laughs> then you're missing out. I, I don't think there's anything right. to be embarrassed about there. I, I think, in fact, it, for anyone who hasn't, it's a missed opportunity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know, we do, we do certain stuff with, uh, I, I mean, my son, I got him involved in, in uh, Star Wars, I was like, I have to, I have to pass this forward. But the, the story of Star Wars and the whole thing, and I made him watch everything. And of course, you know, we got the lightsabers, and we get out there. And we, we, when, when he was younger, we go at it with each other. So yes, yes, Jeremy, you caught me. I have definitely <laughs> nice, used nice. The there are people laughing and nodding sure. along right now, guaranteed. 
Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'm definitely this guilty. Great. This guy right here. What if people want to contact you? Social media, website, email, anything like that that you should share? Um, yeah, yeah. You can uh, check out uh, check out the school. Check out our dojo, Balance Martial Arts uh, dot com. Um, that's uh, we're in the Cary area, um, and um, you know we we are. Your family run business and family dojo. And, uh, yeah, I would love for her to check it out. And in the same, uh, same respect, you know, um, we've got a YouTube channel, we've got, uh, you know, we've got social media, all of that good stuff. And, uh, you know, if anything, I'm sharing, I'd love to sh- make sure that everyone that's listening, you know, you definitely share this podcast. It's phenomenal. I, I, I was not aware of it and I'm new to it, but everyone I've heard is just gets better and better. And I'm really, uh, anybody that's listening, please, please, you know, go to the previous episode, the previous episodes, um, and check it out, guys. It's it's worth it. Uh, uh, the job that uh, Andrew and Jeremy are doing here, and everyone else on the team there, uh, it's phenomenal. So I just really appreciate the opportunity to be here and be able to share a little bit of the, my story and and to be here with you guys. And uh, and uh, definitely, um, I highly recommend anyone that's listening. Uh, check it out because it's 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 really a, a lot of information, a lot of good stuff. Really gets your mind uh, in thinking, and also at the same time getting to connect with others in martial well, arts. Well, thank you. I, I really kind of appreciate that kind of testimonial. That was super kind. Uh, we're really lucky to get to do what we do. I am completely blessed that you know somehow I'm I'm the one on the microphone that gets to talk to the guests. And it's, it's great. I get to call this work. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Well, we're going to put all, you know, you, you mentioned your website. We're going to drop that stuff in the show notes. Excuse me. If anybody's new and you skip the intros, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. So you can go over there, check that out. There'll be a transcript up in a few weeks and everything. But it's time to fade out here. And so I've got one more thing, you know, you, you as the guests get to choose how we fade out. Usually that's final words or parting thoughts or wisdom or, or whatever, you know, you've shared some awesome stuff today. So what would you like your last words to the audience on this episode to be? Uh, well, I guess my, my last words to anyone listening to, to would be, um, Martial arts is so many different things. There's so many different people. And I really encourage you, wherever you are in your training, whether you're starting, whether you've um, been training for a while or you've been training for a long time, um, keep pushing forward. Keep finding the, the passion and the drive that keeps you going. And even when you have that moment, which we all do, where we have a little bit less or if you're in the beginning stages especially you have those days when you don't feel like going to train and or you want to quit um dig deep down inside of yourself find that find the one good thing that will help you push forward and go to that training session because i promise you the training session that you don't go to is the one that you're going to miss the most and as um as you keep journeying in martial arts as you keep training as we keep growing uh, continue to keep a, a, a beginner's mindset. Always keep your mind open to the, to the newest things and also hold on to the things that are the, the old the traditions and the, and the past as well too. But keep that open mindset and keep that open ability to communicate with others and continue to make martial arts uh, a, a positive outlet for so many different people and connect with as many people as possible and share your passion with martial arts to the community and to the world. Uh, wide uh, network of martial artists and to everyone that you meet because again martial arts really does connect us and bind us together and there's so many good lessons that can be learned Um, that would be my advice to everyone listening and also to uh, make new friends through martial arts which I've definitely made some new friends today and I really appreciate it And there you go. If you listen to the intro, you know what I said was true. Wonderful episode, wonderful conversation, and some dynamic 
shifts as we went through the conversation. He was there for. He was ready. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks for your time. Let's talk again soon. Listeners, fans of the show. It's a weird word for me to say, but it's true. There are those of you out there who are fans. It means a lot to me that you are. Go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Go check out the photos and the links and all the other stuff. Sign up for the newsletter. Tell people about what we're doing. Tell them about the mission. This path that we're all on together as martial artists. Remember, if you want to support us, you got tons of ways to do it. Anything that seems like it's helpful would be valued. But a quick view, leave a review. Buy something at whistlekick.com. Check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. And don't forget, we designed this really cool speed development program. If you are a martial artist, and you probably are, and you would like to be faster, and you probably do, go to whistlekickprograms.com. Check it out. If you have guest suggestions, topic suggestions, feedback, did we get something wrong? Let us know. Jeremy at whistlekick.com and our social media, which you should be following, at whistlekick everywhere. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. 